Hi, it's time for another math easy solution to discuss well further into the wonderful world of uh, derivatives of inverse trigonometry and basically look at the derivative of arc cosecant or arc c c x uh, whatever uh, inverse but it basically inverse cosecant here and using implicit differentiation like, differentiation like my earlier videos basically c x uh, this one just stands for cosecant so this is cosecant x yeah, so now if we look at this function here, the inverse of cosecant, we just put a negative one up top. This, this number in my early videos from inverse functions, this just means, well, you just replace the x and y inside the regular cosecant uh, y function here. So you, so this means this, it's, uh, that's all it is. And this one, by definition, this one's just 1 over sine y here. That's what cosecant equals to. So you have this function here. So now before I get to the proof, we need to find a domain and range of this inverse function here. So the first thing I want to do is basically I've, I've graphed out just a regular sine of x function from 0 to uh, 2 pi here. So now before we graph this one, let's just graph a cosecant of x here. But in this case, we're using x, not y. But uh, anyway, so this one, how this graph would look like, number is just going to be 1 divided by whatever this function is here. So and at this point here, this is going to be a value of 1 here. So then 1 divided by 1 is going to be 1. So it's going to have the same point here. So this red is going to be for cosecant x. And now when we have it at the zeros, whenever there's a zero, it's an asymptote here. Because this one, you're going to have a 1 divided by 0 here. So, so we're not going to, it's going to go to infinity here. So it's going to go infinity. So it will look something like this, actually. And then also up to here, you'll have something that looks like this. So uh, these ones go to infinity here. And similarly, when we look at this one here, this value is, is negative 1, so 1 divided by negative 1 is going to be the same thing here. This one is uh, negative 1, so then it's going to be here as well, and then there's a 0 asymptote here, and there's a 0 here. The only difference now is everything's negative here. So we'll go like this, and it will graph out like that. And similarly for here too, you have it uh, basically asymptotes on these zeros here. So go something like this. And basically I want to just double check the graphing. So I've, I've plotted in Google basically sine x and cosecant x here. So as you can see this, the blue is the sine of x and this one looks just like our curve where asymptotes wherever the zeros are. And now if we want to graph out basically the inverse of this uh, cosecant number from early for inverse function, it's just basically the reflection of uh, the y equals x line, so we'll call this y equals x, because all we're doing is switching the x and y's. Yeah, so let's uh, start graphing. Basically, we just look at whatever point here, but actually, for th for this one, remember from my one-to-one, -one, uh, you have to check the one-to-one -one or horizontal line test here. Basically, what when you select the inverse, you have to make sure that for every x value for the inverse, you only get one y value here. So you use the horizontal line test here. So if you cut an intersect here, you can't select this range here because you're going to have this one y value has two x values, but then when you switch it, you'll have one x value having two y values here. So the usual, dom uh, well, usual domain in selecting the inverse, which becomes the range, is usually from, for, for cosecants, usually from here. So this is at uh, negative pi over 2, all the way up to, well, this, yeah, up to here. So this is going to be... Uh, pi over 2 here. Yeah, so I'll just write that down here. Basically, from a negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 is the usual range for cosecant, uh, the inverse of it. And the reason it's range, like before, because we switch the domains and range when we take an inverse. So this is domain of uh, the, that we're selecting, and then we're going to be flipping it. So if we look at this point here, this point here is going to be, well, pi over 2 and 1. So if we switch these, we have to go to, well, 1. Pi over 2 is around 1.57, so it's, we should go to 1 here, and then pi over 2 is a bit bigger, so pi over 2. So the new point is going to be somewhere about, about here. So now we look at this point here. This one is going to basically, well, 0 and infinity. So we flip it. So we go to infinity, and it's approaching 0 here. So we go to somewhere here. This is going to be infinity and 0. And as you can see, it's going to look something like this. So it's going to approach 0, etc. So we'll look something going down like this. And also now when we look at this point here, this is a number of the, you have to look at this domain. So this point here is going to be, well, negative pi over 2 and negative 1. So we have to flip these, go to negative 1. Negative 1 should be around here somewhere. And then go to negative pi over 2. Now pi over 2 is bigger than negative 1. So it's going to be somewhere around here. So we pick this point. And now we look at this point here where it's going to. And this one is going to 0 and negative infinity flip it we're gonna go now to negative infinity and zero so we'll look something like this let's go draw through it 
So this one, it's approaching to basically negative infinity and zero here. Yeah, and thus, basically, from this graph of, well, you, this purple one, it will just this is just the inverse of the cosecant here. So that's inverse cosecant x here. And then from the graph, you can see that the range is going to be full between, uh, well, p y is going to be greater than equal to negative pi over 2, because it equals here. And it's less than 0, because it never touches it. It's asymptote, horizontal asymptote. And then it goes from, well, y is greater than 0, not equal to, just greater. And then it's less than equal to pi over 2. So this is the the range here that we're looking at. So between these two, but it's broken into two because we have this asymptote here. And then the domain, well, actually, before I get to that, I made a mistake here. This one here, I got I graphed it at the wrong point. That's pi over 2. So we have to get it. I'll just stretch it a bit. So th this is the point here. So it gets to right here where, so yeah, I just wanted to fix it up there. And this point here is going to be 1 and pi over 2 here. So th yeah, that's the point here. And then, then the domain, will, this one will just write absolute value of x is greater than or equal to 1 because it's, it's valid for everywhere except between this negative 1 and this 1 here. So at once it's defined, but then in between it's not. So then just the absolute value of it has to be bigger. So it would be negative or positive, but it just has to be bigger than, uh, than 1 here. Okay, so now uh, that we have the domain arranged, we could find the, the proof here using implicit differentiation. So this one here... Recall just uh, from above, I showed that the inverse of cosecant uh, x is just going to be replaced like this. It's going to be x equals cosecant y, and this equals 2, 1 over sine y by definition. So now we could use implicit differentiation. Well, before that, I just want to write this in uh, sine y in terms of x. So sine y, is, this one, just, you can flip it around, this equals 1 over x here. So we'll use this in the proof later, but uh, right now we're going to use this to use implicit differentiation here. So if we write it down a bit neater, or just to uh, multiply the sine y out, we're going to have x times sine y equals 1. Now using implicit differentiation, which is basically just do the derivative on both sides and, uh, and apply the product and chain rule, we're going to have the derivative of x is going to be 1 times it by sine y. So now we plus x times by the derivative of sine y, which is going to be cos y, and then times it by the derivative of uh, using chain rule y prime. And then the derivative of 1 is equal to 0 here. See more on uh, implicit differenti differentiation, also the root of sine y in my video links in the info below. So basically here, if we rearrange for y prime, we get, yeah, we get basically this one here, y prime is equal to negative sine y divided by x cos, uh, cos y here. And also recall, from this we're doing derivative uh, y prime is going to be dy over dx here. So we're doing it in terms of x, I just want to state it because we're using implicit differentiation. So basically we have this one here. And what we want is basically cosine and y uh, in terms of x, but we know sine y is in terms of x, so we could write this one out as well, 1 over x squared cosine y here. So now we just got to get y, cos y in terms of uh, x. It's so basically if we recall this identity, sine squared y plus cos squared y equals 1. You can see the proof of this in the video link below. Basically, uh, so we could write this in terms of sine y, and we know sine y is in terms of x, so we could get this in terms of x. So we could go solve for cos y is going to be equal to, well, if we rearrange, it's going to be plus or minus square root everything, 1 minus sine squared y. So we move over and square root it. That's going to be a plus or minus, but now this is where the domain and range come into play or actually the range in this case. So the range we selected, is, which is a usual selected one, it's between basically negative pi over 2 all the way to pi over 2 here. Yeah, so recall from in this cos y here, it goes from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, uh, positive. So what this means, if you recall the graph of just regular cos of x, we're going to get something like this. And th this is cos of x. And there's the x and y coordinates. Basically, this is pi over 2. And this is negative pi over 2. So this is the only area that we're looking at. We're looking at and this whole thing is greater than 0 here. So if it's greater than 0, we, can, we ignore this negative here. And we only look at this positive here. So that's what cosine y equals to. And basically, thus, uh, cosine y is equal to just a plus uh, square root 1 minus sine squared y. And sine squared y, this one just equals to, well, we know this one's going to be 1 over x squared here. Because sine y is equal to 1 over x. And then we just square it here, so 1 over x squared. So we could just plug this now in to our equation here. So we're going to get, yeah, we'll get this one uh, function right here, y prime is equal to, well, negative uh, 1 divided by x squared times by square root 1 minus uh, 1 over x squared. So this is our answer here, but we could simplify it into the usual form, like uh, well, the one Wikipedia has, by basically simplifying this out. So we could write x squared here as what's usually written as basically, in this case, would we, if we take this out, we could write it as 
absolute value of x times this by square root of x squared. I'll explain why we'll do this soon. And basically this means the same thing here because this one here, the square root of, of x squared, this just means x two over two here. So then this equals to x. And then this one here is this one has to be absolute value because so we're using this because x squared has to be greater than zero. So if we take it out, we can't just have an x by itself because if you put a negative, you get a negative function here. So x squared has to be greater than zero, that's why this absolute value is there. Yeah, so then we get this function here if we plug those in. So uh, absolute value of x times square root, x squared, et cetera, times it by this square root here. So now the reason I'm, I'm doing this is so we could combine these two square roots because recall from my power functions video, you can see a video link below, that basically if you have two functions multiplied by each other and they have the same to the power of it, like this one here, one over two, is the same thing as square root, and this is, t this is the power of one over two, then you could just combine them here. So you could just combine them like this, and then now we could just do that with this function here. So if we combine them, we get something like this here. And if we simplify this by multiplying it out, we're going to get one over uh, absolute value of x times it by square root x squared minus one here, because the square roots cancel when you multiply it out. So this is our final derivative here. And now, now to look at the domain in this case, well, this one here, this x, because uh, we have this one divided by square root x squared minus one here, the x squared minus one has to be greater than zero here. And that's because you had the square root here. So the square root has to do, and that's only true if x, basically x squared less than one is greater than zero or x squared is greater than zero here. I mean greater than one here. And this, this basically means basically the absolute value of x has to be greater than one here. If it equals one, you'll get, so it, yeah, so if x equals one, you're gonna get a one divided by one, which equals to basically square root zero or zero, and you're gonna have a one divided by zero, which is infinity, so not defined here. So this is the domain here. You could also just simplify this a bit further. If you square root out and get x is greater than, yeah, greater than plus one and uh, yeah, less than uh, negative one because of the square root. But anyways, this is all it is. It has to be positive here. So just the absolute value, it has to be greater than one here because if it was less, you're gonna have a negative square root. That's a, not a real number. You see in my video on real numbers in the video links below, but any, anyways, this is zero here. Yeah, so anyways, you get, I just want to write this down, but neither. So this function y equals uh, cosecant inverse of x is equals to, well, uh, this function here for this domain here. And remember that, and recall from other videos, this is just going to be the negative of the secant inverse uh, derivative of it. Okay, so now uh, I just want to just graph uh, these out. Basically, this one first, I just want to show that this was cosecant x, this is arc cosecant x is the, or the inverse uh, cosecant x is the, uh, the red one here. So as you can see from my earlier, earlier graph, this looks exactly like how I graphed it out here. And now when we take a derivative and compare them here, basically this red one is the inverse cosecant x. So this looks like our graph. And then the, the blue is the derivative here. As you can see from uh, this one here, at this point here, it's decreasing goes to infinity negative. That's the asymptote at x equals to one. And this one here is infinite asymptote as well. And you can see, yeah, and then it goes to zero here as this asymptote goes to zero here. So yeah, this is basically the function here. Well, that's uh, all for today. Hopefully you learned about this uh, derivative here, and hopefully it wasn't too uh, complicated here. But that's all for today. Hopefully you learned, and uh, you can remember you can always download these notes in the Dropbox link below. And uh, that's all for today. Hopefully you learned, and uh, stay tuned for another math easy solution.